What's up, football fans? It's Bucky Brooks, and I am going to take you through a mock draft that I did especially for Fox Sports Digital. This is right. This is accurate. So I don't want to hear about all the pushback. So let's go through it. One through 32, all the picks. And let's start at number one, the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars will select Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan. He is an ideal fit, blue collar player, great athleticism off the edge. Production is coveted at a premium. He's going to give them that. I think he will pair well with Josh Allen at the top of the charts. That's why he's my number one pick. At two, let's go to the Detroit Lions. And that is going to Trayvon Walker. And I know Trayvon Walker only has six sacks his final season with the Georgia Bulldogs, but he's a versatile frontline athlete who kind of plays the way that Dan Campbell likes. Lots of energy, lots of effort, lots of toughness, needs some refinement, but he is going to help the Detroit Lions get back on track. Let's go to three with the Houston Texans. I'm gonna go off the grid a little bit. I am going to go with Evan Neal, the tackle from Alabama. Evan Neal is solid, he's polished, he's very effective in run or pass. He will kind of solidify the backside and really, he won't have to solidify the backside. He can play right tackle because Larry Tunsil is at left tackle. And now the Texans have a formidable offensive line. At four, with the New York Jets, let's give them Sauce Garner. Ahmad Sauce Garner, the cornerback from Cincinnati, long range athlete, outstanding toughness, great instincts and ball skills. He is the number one corner that they have been missing. I think he's a perfect fit in Robert Sala's defense. At five with the New York Giants, it's another frontline player. Let's go with Iki Aquanu from North Carolina State. Big physical player. Does a great job mauler brawler, like as a mauler brawler at the point of attack. He's going to be physical. He's going to make sure that he gives them an attitude. So I think you'll see more production from Saquon Barkley. More importantly, you may see better play from Daniel Jones. At six, the Carolina Panthers. There's going to be some speculation that they take a quarterback. Let's not take a quarterback here. Let's take another offensive tackle. Let's go with Charles Cross. Charles Cross gives the Panthers a chance to get better right away because he's going to protect Sam Donald. He's going to give Christian McCaffrey an opportunity to run. And if they play better on offense, it gives Matt Rule an opportunity to unleash his defense. And that could be enough to not only save his job, but keep this team competitive this season. At seven with the New York Giants, we gave them a frontline player on offense. Let's give them a frontline player on defense. And I am thinking that Jermaine Johnson could be the pick. Jermaine Johnson coming from Florida State. We may be talking about a guy who really gets it. First up quickness, outstanding athleticism, great pass rushing skill. He is a guy that can hunt the quarterback. And because he can hunt the quarterback, Joe Shane, the general manager for the Giants, is going to be all over him. At eight, let's go with the Atlanta Falcons. And we have Kayvon Thibodeau coming off the board at this point. Thibodeau is an explosive pass rusher. He comes off the ball with great instincts and awareness as a natural bend and burst. He has a knack for being able to get quarterbacks down. Yes, there's some concerns and some questions about his motor, but in Atlanta, they need a pass rusher because they haven't had one since John Abraham. He is the guy that can help them get it done. At nine, the Seattle Seahawks, I'm gonna go off the grid. Let's go Utah linebacker, Devin Lloyd. Devin Lloyd is a versatile linebacker. Kind of reminds me of when Bobby Wagner was coming out. They won't play the same position, but Devin Lloyd can play outside. He can play inside. More importantly, he is fast and athletic, and they need more speed and athleticism on the front line. At 10, let's give the New York Jets a wide receiver, but this wide receiver is going to be Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson coming off the board at 10, Give Zach Wilson a natural playmate on the perimeter. Someone who's an outstanding route runner, someone who should team with Elijah Moore and Corey Davis to give this team a very formidable wide receiver core. More importantly, it gives Zach Wilson an opportunity to grow with his pass catchers because they're all young. And as they're all young, as they grow together, they have an opportunity to build this offense and help this offense get back on track. At 11, we have the Washington Commanders. And so I'm thinking Kyle Hamilton would be the pick for the commanders. You put Kyle Hamilton in the box. He has traits that really remind you of a linebacker, but he has footwork that is like a cornerback. And so as you think about the way the game is trending, you need to have someone that is stout and sturdy at the second level. I think this guy is a stout, sturdy playmaker who can do a lot of things for your defense. With the Minnesota Vikings, this is a perfect time for them to take a cornerback. And I'm gonna give them Derek Stingley. 
Derek Stingley is a very talented player. He's a guy who suffered some injuries and some inconsistency his last two seasons at LSU, but he's a five-star talent. And I think putting him in Minnesota where he has an opportunity to learn with his mentor, Patrick Peterson, I think that would be a great fit for the Vikings. At 13, the Houston Texans, let's go with Drake London. Drake London is a big body, number one receiver, big guy, talented, does a great job making 50-50 ball catches on the perimeter as you're trying to develop the young quarterback in Davis Mills. You want to make sure that you have a weapon for him to target. Drake London, going with Brandon Cooks, and some of the other young guys that they have in the stable. These guys give Davis Mills an opportunity to reach his potential, and if he reaches his potential, this offense can be much better than we expect this season. The Baltimore Ravens. This is a team that lost their corners last year. They had injuries suffered to Marcus Peters. Marlon Humphrey was kind of up and down, due, uh, being banged up. Let's go Trent McDuffie. Trent McDuffie gives them a nickel cornerback with a high IQ, great instincts and awareness, has been well-trained, come from the University of Washington, which has produced a lot of elite DBs over the last couple of years. He is the next one to be able to get it done at the National Football League level. Nice fit for the Ravens at 14. At 15, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles are sitting pretty with two picks in the first round. They certainly want to address their offensive need on the outside. Let's go get them another playmaker. Uh, how about Chris Olave? Chris Olave to go with Devontae Smith, two talented route runners, two big time playmakers, guys that really excel at putting the ball in the paint. If they're talking about really having confidence in Jalen Hurts, let's give them a couple weapons. Uh, Chris Olave to go with Devontae Smith last year's number one receiver. That is a way to be able to get it done. Let's go to 16, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I think this is the perfect time for the Saints to take an offensive tackle. Let's go with Trevor Penning. Trevor Penning coming from Northern Iowa. You want to make sure if you're the Saints, you protect the offensive line. The offensive line is one where you lose Terran Armstead. He goes to the Miami Dolphins. You bring Trevor Penning in. You're able to run the football. You're able to play the kind of football that the Saints want to play in Dennis Allen's first year. At 17, the Los Angeles Chargers. And, you know, this is a tricky one because the Chargers would certainly love to upgrade their offensive line, but I don't know if there's a good pick for them in this situation. When I look at them and think about some of the stuff that they could use, I think a receiver would be really good. So let's give them a receiver, maybe Jahan Dotson from Penn State. I know it's a little early, 17. We've heard some other receivers kind of thrown around like Traylon Burks, but the difference is Doxton is a little quicker, a little more sudden. And when you think about the composition of their wide receiver core, big bodies, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, Dotson may complement the receiver core better than Burks. That's why I'm gonna go with him at this pick. The Saints. So we're sitting at the Saints at 18. We took care of their offensive line need early. Now let's give them a pass catcher. The pass catcher we can give them, let's give them a big body. How about Traylon Burks? Traylon Burks going there to complement Michael Thomas, two big bodies on the perimeter, expands the strike zone for Jameis Winston. Now they can go and play the kind of football that they want to play. The Philadelphia Eagles. This is interesting because when we think about the Eagles and how they typically like to play, this is a team that is really good at the line of scrimmage, but you just wonder, are they good enough at the point of attack to be able to take somebody in the pivot? Jason Kelsey is thinking about retiring. Um, so I think a guard would be in order here. And the guard that I'm going to go with, how about Zion from Boston College? I know there's been a lot of conversation about Kenyon Green, but maybe Zion is a better fit at 19, has versatility to play more spots, and they are able to kind of play the style of football they want to play as soon as Jason Kelsey is retiring. This gives them an opportunity to have an easy transition. So here we are. We're at 20. Pick 20. We have not seen a quarterback go off the board. So this is the place where Kenny Pickett can go off the board for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They know him. He's right there in the same building. They share a facility with the Panthers. Now they have a quarterback to groom to be their QB1 for the next decade, much like Ben Roethlisberger was for a Hall of Fame career doing a sign with the Pittsburgh Steelers. At 21, let's go with the New England Patriots. And the Patriots are really sitting tight because they have a ton of needs, but they, they kind of need to upgrade what they have on the perimeter. They lose J.C. Jackson. Yeah, they bring a couple of veterans in, but, but this is still a great opportunity for them to get the corner. I'm going to go with maybe a guy like Andrew Booth from Clemson. Versatile, great guy, tackling in space. Outstanding instincts, can play a variety of ways. 
I think he'd be a nice fit. So we'll go with him at 21. At 22, the Green Bay Packers. There's going to be a lot of conversation about the Green Bay Packers. They have to get a wide receiver. Not so much. Let's slow down. Let's go and give them an offensive tackle with Bernard Raymond, the offensive tackle from Central Michigan. Wide receiver does a great job playing with his feet. And you think about what they want to do with their offense line. They want to protect Aaron Rodgers. Raymond could be a guy that certainly helps them at that point of attack. The Arizona Cardinals sitting at 23. Maybe they get a big body. Maybe that big body is Jordan Davis. Then he's someone who's long, lengthy, and athletic. He's powerful and explosive at the point of attack. He is the guy that can get it done. I know they lost Chandler Jones, but if you want to play, you got to build this defense from inside out. So let's go with Jordan Davis at that pick. The Dallas Cowboys at 24. There's been conversations about the Cowboys potentially trading up. Do they trade up to maybe get a playmaker? Do they trade up to get a dominant player? Jerry Jones is on record saying they got to figure it out. They got to figure out what they want to do. I'm going to fix the offensive line. Give me Kenyon Green from Texas A&M. Big old bully at the point of attack. He moves people off the ball. If the Cowboys want to play the style of football that has been the most successful for them in the past, it's about building that offensive line. So let's go with Kenyon Green at 24. At 25, the Buffalo Bills. Let's go Breeze Hall from Iowa State. Outstanding running back, a guy that can run inside and outside, catches the ball like a wide receiver, gives them a threat out of the backfield in the passing game. You think about all the work that was done by Josh Allen, he needs someone to alleviate the pressure. That pressure reliever might be that running back from Iowa State. Tennessee Titans. Now, this is tricky because you're the Tennessee Titans and you're trying to figure out where to go. Ryan Tannehill is 34 years old. This might be the time for them to get a quarterback. Let's give them a quarterback. Let's give them Malik Willis from Liberty. Malik Willis has time. He needs time to develop. Well, this is a great situation because Ryan Tannehill is 34. He's a Pro Bowl player, still playing at a pretty good level. So now you can maybe redshirt Malik Willis for a year or two, give him an opportunity to fully develop, and then he is ready to pop at the next level. 27, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm thinking somebody on the inside like Devontae Wyatt from Georgia. Disruptive player. You put him alongside Vita Vea, dominated the point of attack. And Ty Bowles has a defense that just makes life easy for Tom Brady. Remember, and Dominican Sue is still out there lurking as a free agent. If he doesn't resign, you now have a young player to groom for a big role when the big guy does eventually resign and eventually departs the game when he retires. 28, the Green Bay Packers. Now, this is a tough one because the Packers have not selected a wide receiver in the first round in 20 years. But maybe we're in the street right now. Let's go with Christian Watson, wide receiver from North Dakota State. Big, freakishly athletic, small school standout. Outstanding production. He's a big play waiting to happen. When the ball is in his hand, he makes magic happen. So let's say that Aaron Rodgers loses Devontae Adams, but he gains a weapon from the FCS level. That weapon is Christian Watson. Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs are, are really in a funny situation because Andy Reid is on record saying they don't necessarily need a receiver to be able to get it done. So let's not give them a receiver. Let's go with a safety from Michigan, Dax Hill. Daxton Hill, guy can play multiple spots in the secondary. Yes, you lose Tyron Matthew, you bring over Justin Reed, but you still want to upgrade that secondary. So let's give them a playmaker in the back end. Kansas City Chiefs here at 30. This is tough because they still need somebody off the edge, someone that can sack the passers. So let's go with Logan Hall from Houston. Logan Hall is someone that is flying under the radar, but I got a sneaky suspicion that he is going to be a guy that gets picked in the first round. So let's give them to the Kansas City Chiefs. It is a great fit. Chris Jones, Frank Clark. Now you have Logan Hall. This defense should be ready to compete. Cincinnati Bengals. They're in desperate need of a cornerback. So let's give them Kair Elam from Florida, a guy who has great instincts, awareness, can play the ball, can play man or zone, uh, very sticky in his technique and coverage. He's a nice fit because remember, this Cincinnati Bengals team were able to get to the Super Bowl without an A-level corner. I think this is the time for them to get one. At 32, let's go to Detroit Lions. Let's give them an edge rusher. Arnold Ebicati from Penn State. Terrific player, high energy High motor, great effort, pass rusher, really came into his own during a season with the Nittany Lions. He is someone that is intriguing. When you think about Dan Campbell's defense, it's about energy, effort, and toughness. 
Ebikati gives them all of those traits. So there you have it, my mock draft. Uh, we will see what it looks like. It only takes a trade or a crazy pick to blow it up. Can't wait to hear your feedback. Make sure you tune in to Fox Sports Digital for all of your NFL and NFL draft needs. I'm Bucky Brooks. I will see you next time.